Today's video is all about umbrellas, and I'm going to show you three unusual ways to use them. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. And when I first started shooting in the studio, I began with umbrella light modifiers. And because I used these early on in my career, I thought that they were terrible. And that's because my photos using umbrellas were terrible, but that was because I was early on and I didn't understand the light. Now today, more than two decades into shooting in the studio, I love umbrellas. I use them for everything. I use them as a main light, a background light, a fill light, you name it. And so today in this fashion shoot, I wanna show you how I use umbrellas in three different ways. Things that are a little bit atypical and can give you some really beautiful results. For this first shot, we're going to have an unusual placement of our umbrella, which is basically almost up directly over the subject's head. Now, this is not a lighting setup that I invented. In fact, there's a famous fashion photographer named Scribneski who used this all the time. He has this very famous photo of, uh, I believe it was Diana Ross, where it's an umbrella directly over her head and he included the umbrella in the shot. And what that does is by having the umbrella so high up, it creates beautiful raking dramatic light, carves out the cheekbones and jawline. It carves out texture and clothing, which is actually why I picked this look for this particular setup. The lighting is going to be perfect to emphasize the texture of this dress. Now you do have some variation with this. In this case, I don't have my light exactly overhead. It's a little to the front and to the side, but if you place it directly over top, you have to be careful of shadows in the eyes. If the subject keeps their head down, basically the entire face is going to be in shadow. So generally I'll have the subject lift their head a little bit, turn it slightly to the side, something just to catch a little bit of light on the face. Now, in this case, by moving it slightly forward and just a little bit off to the side, it helps the light wrap a little bit more, which means it's a little bit easier to shoot, but you still have many of those dramatic characteristics. So with that being said, let's take a sample shot. For this image, I am shooting with a Savage Universal fashion gray background. Now, the reason I like this is because I can light the background to make it a little bit higher key image, or I can pull light away to make it lower key. And so in this example, where I angle the umbrella will make a big difference to the end result. Now, I am currently shooting this raw, shooting it in color, but where I think this setup really comes to life, shows the magic, is when you convert to black and white. So. Let's go over here into capture one. I'm shooting tethered and I am going to change this to black and white. Then I'm going to pop my contrast and I'm going to add some clarity. And you can see in the before after just how dramatically it transforms this image. The light on her face glows, it almost sings. And then you can see the contrast and clarity add to the texture of the dress. Notice her chin is slightly up and so it's catching the beautiful light on her face. Now, so far, she's just kind of standing there, but where the magic of the shot will come to life is in the movement or in the pose. So for this setup, that's it. It is one light overhead for beautiful dramatic results. For this shoot, I am using a Profoto Pro D3 with a Profoto large deep white umbrella with diffusion, which is basically just a big soft light source. But beyond that, the only other thing you really need to pay attention to is Safety. You basically have a big light boomed out overhead. You don't want it to hit your subject or to be unstable. So a couple of quick tips is when you are doing a lighting setup like this, first you wanna use a larger base. We are using a medium roller here, but the larger, the more stable it's going to be. And if you're not using a roller like this, you definitely wanna use sandbags to make it more stable. You'll also notice that we're using something called a boom arm or a mini boom. That's the arm that is holding it out overhead. In order to make this stable, you'll typically wanna add a counterweight of something called a pumpkin head or a shot bag. Both of these counterbalance the weight of the strobe and the modifier. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. The unusual lighting setup is the umbrella with diffusion directly overhead of the subject. All right, so now I'm gonna look for movement, keeping my subject's head slightly lifted towards the light. For our second setup, an unusual use of an umbrella, I'm going to modify a typical umbrella. First, let me show you what it looks like with a standard setup, and then we're going to make the switch and you can see just how much of a change it makes. So in this setup, I'm going to actually be using two different umbrellas. One is our main light and one is the background light. The main light you see over the left-hand side 
is a medium silver deep umbrella. Now, by the way, when I choose umbrellas, most of the time I aim for deeper modifiers. This depth allows me to more easily feather the light, which allows me to control where the light is hitting. This is going to be key when I make that modification. Sometimes a deep umbrella is still not enough to control the spill of light. All right, so let me show you what we're working with, with just that first silver umbrella. We have the umbrella placed off to the left-hand side of the frame, which creates nice sculpting on the shadow side of the face. It looks very nice, but I think the picture looks flat. Like what I would like to do is maybe make the background go darker, take light away from it, and then perhaps add a background light. In other words, I'm lighting in layers so I can control the position, the amount of each light separately. Now, one way that I could control the spill of light in the background again is to feather the light across the frame, but I already said it's not always enough. So the next trick is our unusual use of modifier. What we're going to do is we are going to close the umbrella. So instead of how it is now where it's spreading light out, we're actually going to narrow that beam and position it facing our subject. Now, when we do this, you often lose a little bit of light. The umbrella starts to block it. So you do have to go up in power slightly. Now you can see how much darker the background has gotten from narrowing the beam of light, basically slightly closing the umbrella. In all of these shots, I've been using the Savage Universal Fashion Gray, but notice how I can take it from a medium gray to a dark gray. That's exactly what I was looking for to help me give depth to the shot. I need to add a secondary umbrella to light the background. All right, for our second light, our background light, it is going to be a slightly unusual way to light a background. I'm going to use a small shoot through umbrella and I'm pointing it at the background to give me a gradient from the bottom. Now, the reason this is unusual is, is typically you wouldn't use a shoot through to light the background, but it allows us to shoot in a very condensed space. I can basically have that shoot through right up against the background and it will give me a soft gradient. So let me add that second background light. Now you'll see this beautiful glow and gradient behind the subject. But if we had the umbrella in its original position opened all the way up, you would barely see this because so much light from the main light would be spilling on the background. There wouldn't be enough difference between the two. So in this setup, the key was closing that main modifier to limit the spread of light and then adding a second umbrella to create a gradient. Now those are all the umbrellas for this setup, but I do want to add one more modification. We're not introducing another light, but instead a bounce light source. We're going to add a silver bounce reflector on the shadow side of the subject's face, just to give her a little bit more separation on her beautiful jawline. So will you grab that for me? You can see now that there's a really pretty highlight just on the top of her cheekbone and her jawline, which I think adds another layer of depth to the shot. I still think this looks kind of moody. And so I will probably turn this into a black and white, but you of course could color grade this into a more interesting color image. So what I'm going to do, same thing as before, I am going to Changes to black and white, pop my contrast, maybe even darken it down just a little bit, something like that. Now, as you can imagine, when I go with this level of contrast, if there was no bounce reflector on the right-hand side of the frame, you would completely lose the detail on this part of her face and jawline. So it becomes even more important once I switch to black and white and pop my contrast. Now, by the way, before we get the shot, which is going to be about posing in connection with camera, I did want to mention one thing about camera gear. For all of these images, I'm going to be shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 24 to 105 lens, because with one lens, I can shoot from full length to bend length to close up, and it never slows me down. Next thing I wanted to mention is that for many of these strobes, I'm using Profoto Pro D3s. In our first setup, when I had my subject moving her dress and, and throwing it in the air, I was shooting at a very fast frame rate that was allowing me to capture all the movement of the dress so I could find the perfect frame. The Pro D3, has incredibly fast recycle time and kept up with every single one of those frames, which is one of the reasons that I choose that strobe. Okay, so from the gear talk, let's go get the shot. For our last setup, I was inspired by my subject's dress. And what we're going to do is add colors that reflect the colors of that gown. Now, the unusual use of umbrellas is that we're going to create a gradient of color from one to the other across that background. Typically, people use umbrellas to kind of just evenly light the background all one tone, but instead, we're going to use it to create that beautiful blend of colors. I'm actually using umbrellas in many different ways. I have them as a background light, a rim light, 
a fill light, a main light, all of those things in one set up here. So I wanted to show you many different uses of umbrellas in a single set. So I'm gonna turn these all off and build them in one by one. All right, so we're going to begin with our main light, which is the medium silver deep umbrella on the left-hand side of the frame. And it is the same setup as before where it is closed down so we can control the spill of light. If the light were hitting the background, it would actually dilute our color a bit. So we are closing it down so we have more of a concentrated beam. All right, so you can see how this is creating really dramatic light on the face and lots of shadows to the scene, which is going to be really important as we start to add our gel. Okay, so the first color that I wanna to introduce to the shot is to the top right-hand corner of our background. Again, it's the fashion gray background. We are adding a large umbrella with diffusion, this time with a blue gel. It being placed at such a high angle is going to cause it to rake blue from the top down. You can see that the background is uneven in color now. So it's brightest blue at the top right, and then it fades off to shadow on either side and the bottom. This is very much on purpose because we are going to introduce additional color to the scene. So our next two lights are actually doing two different jobs. They're going to act as rim lights and to create a little color on the background. Now we're actually using two different types of umbrellas. And what I want you to notice is that they create a slightly different quality of light. So over here to the left-hand side of the frame, we are using a large umbrella with diffusion and this has a green gel. And on the right-hand side of the frame, we're using just a shallow white umbrella, also with a green gel. So on the left-hand side with the diffusion, it's going to create a softer highlight with a little bit more spread. And on the right-hand side, it's going to be a little bit more crisp. So let's add in both of those two rim lights and background lights. So what you can see is the top part of the frame is still blue, but the bottom part of the frame is heavily green. If I wanted to see more of that blue, what I could do is I could go to our large umbrella with diffusion and turn up the power of that light and it begins to blend in further down with the green. I went up two stops of light. So I quadrupled the power of our blue light and you can see how it starts to overpower the background. So in other words, how I'm controlling how much blue I see or how much green I see is by the power of light and then also the angles that I put them at. I like the green a little bit better. So I'm going to reset that top light and we're going to add our final strobe. So our final light that we're going to add to the scene is to the right hand side, our final large umbrella with diffusion. This time we have a teal gel and that is going to fill in all the shadows on the dark side of the face. You can see how these colors now blending together, the teal, the green, the blue, they're all working together to mimic the hues of the dress, which I love. And if I want things to be even cooler, I can shift my white balance to make everything even more blue or I can play around with my tint. This is a great starting place for color. And then in color grade, I can dial it in to be the mermaid fantasy perfection that I am looking for. All right, so beautiful place to start. But then of course, we bring it to life with our pose, our camera angle and expression. So there you have it, three unusual uses of umbrella light modifiers. In our first setup, the unusual use was putting that umbrella basically above the subject's head to create gorgeous dramatic light. In our second setup, we closed down the umbrella to create a more concentrated area of light, preventing it from hitting the background. In our third setup, we used umbrellas to create a gradient of colors using color gels for a really interesting ombre and, and more depth to our shot. But you can see in that final setup, we actually use umbrellas in many different ways. Our main light, our fill light, our rim lights, background light, you name it. So umbrellas clearly are versatile modifiers. And what's great about them is that they are the least expensive modifiers out there. Now, if this has piqued your interest, if you didn't realize how much you could do with umbrellas, you'll definitely wanna check out my umbrella lighting guide. This guide has 20 different setups in it. Everything from headshots to creative fashion, editorials, personal branding, and more. Plus, I use bounce umbrellas, shoot through umbrellas, silver umbrellas, white umbrellas, so you can really see how much umbrellas have to offer. All right, guys, if you wanna see the gear used to make these three diverse different images, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, visit adorama.com. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe because I have many more videos just like this one coming your way. Thanks, guys.